Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Blatstein. I'm the physician who created Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. I am going to share the screen now. And for those of you who are white collar defendants, this may be a, a little bit of good news but taken with caution. So in white collar cases, the United States versus Bank in the third district in Philadelphia recently held that in these white collar cases, usually it's been that they would, they would rule in a case based on intended loss. Well, they've changed that to actual loss which is a good thing for white collar cases. It's an easy, easily, it's easier for white collar defendants because it would have an actual loss would calculate to a lesser criminal penalty in a fraud case. It will reduce the penalties. And it will impact more broadly on deferred prosecution agreements, non-prosecution agreements, negotiated resolutions, but where from the eyes of the stakeholders of the Department of Justice, they may have a problem with this because about several, three to four weeks ago, I released several YouTubes and podcasts that they, their policy for 2023-2024 is that their policy now is increasing investigation and prosecutions of corporate malfeasance. And this is going after individuals who commit corporate fraud or corporate crime, no, individual crime within the corporate structure. And they are, they are, what's the word I'm looking for? They want the corporation itself to identify the individuals who are committing the corporate crime in their, in their own corporate structure and provide that information to the Department of Justice before they show up at their front door in order to receive corporate credit. Otherwise, they, the corporation will have issues with the Department of Justice. And so, it's it's the burden is upon the corporation, but ultimately it's upon the individual white collar defendant. What are you going to do? Because while it's better that you have a lesser penalty and to reduce penalties, because now it's now it's based on actual loss. If you choose to go to trial, the Department of Justice is going to be that much more aggravated and they're going to throw the book at you. And so this is a big decision. Do you go to trial or do you plead? <clears throat> My next slide is going to be United States versus banks again. No, this is somehow my mouse is moving ahead of me. And so this is going to significantly lower penalties in fraud cases because it's based on actual crime. They're not going to go into the future based on intended loss or gain. Because there's money laundering, if there's commingled funds, how are they going to figure that out? Financial transactions re in, where there's structures, where the cases are involving a pattern of unlawful, acti of unlawful activity, uh, you know, your lawyer and the government may have to figure that one out also. Taxes involving multiple alleged violations. Well, the word alleged, I don't know, it has to be actual. And what struck my eye from the very beginning was a corporate resolution where a company seeks credit for self-reporting, cooperation, or acceptance of responsibility. And here... So what's going to be the expectation of pushback from the Department of Justice regarding corporate compliance and cooperation? And I think that the attorneys are going to know that they're going to have to go into the courtroom prepared because Department of Justice probably is going to push back 
I would think against this. I don't know that this is settled law. This may go higher in appeals. So if that's the case, and I'm not a lawyer, again, you have the decisions to make. And these are big decisions. You know, if you go to trial and you win because you feel you have a strong case with your attorney, then that you go home, the victor. If you lose, you know, you, if you lose, then you have to be prepared for harsher sentences. If you plea, you have a lesser sentence. You're still facing that. And the next phase is that you need to be able to face what's called sentencing mitigation, your personal narrative, allocution. And then most of it is after you enter the BOP, Federal Bureau of Prisons, where you have to self-advocate for yourself. And that's where services like what I do come in and I'm more than willing to answer questions. Consultations are on me, but ultimately these cases are good for white collar defendants because everything now appears to be on the surface based on actual rather than intended loss or gain. My phone number is available on the screen, 240-888-7778. I hope that you found this helpful. I'm available for consultation. I'm grateful that you've taken the time to listen. Have a good and safe evening or afternoon.